Well, it's been over two months since I put the new Fontanini anvil in the shop, and a lot of people are asking how I like it. The simple answer is, I love it. This is a way nicer anvil than the old one that I had. Now, I do miss the old one, mostly for sentimental reasons, and it looked really cool in the videos, but because the top wasn't completely flat and the hardy hole was so screwed up, it just wasn't as efficient an anvil to work on. And some of the features on this anvil really make it more useful, and I haven't really had to think about how to use them. They just kind of fall naturally into my workflow. Although I am still exploring a lot of the different uses for the side face. I think I called it a side shelf earlier. Steve corrected me, said the proper name is a side face, not a shelf or a table or whatever else I might have called it. So I'm going to try and get in the habit of calling it a side face. But because of the hardy hole on my old anvil was kind of odd shaped and a little bit oversized because it was worn out over the years, a lot of my tools don't fit this hardy hole. So today I thought I would talk about adapting tools to fit the hardy hole. Now the ones that are too big, pretty easy to adapt. We'll look at a couple of different options on how to do that. But then there's the ones that are too small. Some of them way too small. I mean, that's just almost a useless tool in here. And one approach to smaller tools is just to make a sleeve that you can use for multiples. Although this one is a three quarter inch shank. I don't know where I got that. It's an old used tool. I haven't had an anvil with a three quarter inch hardy hole in it for 30 years. And so it's a little bit loose even in the adapter. But even the adapter doesn't fit all the way down in the anvil. So it's gonna need some work as well. Now this video is not sponsored by Fontanini Anvils. However, Black Bear Forge in general is sponsored by Combat Abrasives, which is a good thing because the way I'm gonna deal with most of these tools is by taking them to the grinder. So when grinding these down, I kind of get an idea how far it goes in by itself and then start grinding. And if you see any rub marks on the side of the tool, that'll tell you something. Some of these tools just really need to be squared up first and make them a little bit more true. This one with a U-shaped shank that's designed to have a wedge driven through it to hold it down tight to the anvil is just a little bit irregular enough. It was actually loose fitting in the other one and it just doesn't hardly drop into this anvil at all. So the first thing I do is just kind of grind it square and reduce that tail end without reducing the top end. When it's all done, I want the very top of this to fit as tight as possible. If this tail end is tapered a little bit, that doesn't hurt anything. So that doesn't take very much grinding and it just darn near fits. You have to check, well see it actually fits in that direction. Almost in that direction. So we gotta figure out what, what the difference is and why it holds up. It's not perfectly straight, but that is a feature left over from the old anvil because it was made to fit that. And I use it this way, so I don't really need it to fit this way quite as much. So if there's some patina or scale on this, you might be able to just work it up and down in the hole a little bit and see if it rubs some shiny spots on the shank to let you know exactly where you need to work. If the material is too new, too clean, you might put some die cam or something like that or even some soot just to color it up so you can see the shiny spots. What I see are some marks up in here. I don't know if you can see those or not. I think I'll put some die cam down here just to be sure. This is just a machinist's layout fluid. I'm sure there are other brands out there as well. This just happens to be what I have on hand. And let that dry. What I do know from doing a few of these already is that because this is a cast anvil, there's a little bit of a mold line down the center of the hardy hole where the two halves of the mold were brought together and there's a little ridge down in there. It's been ground clean up at the top, but it's really hard to get that ground real clean down in the bottom. I suppose I could spend hours with a file trying to get that cleaned out, but it's really just a matter of putting a little bit of a taper on these tools, and then it usually works out just fine. Okay, so we're gonna 
put that in and out of this. I'm going to do it at all sides, even though I don't have to make it fit. Well, that just goes down if it's, but it doesn't come out very easily. That should tell me right there, just a few little scratch marks right down there. And right around in there. So I'm going to go clean those up. A few little shiny spots up here. Don't, don't over grind, just do the bare minimum to get it to fit. I have frequently put up with some fairly loose hardy tools because of the oddities in that old anvil. But if they fit good and snug and are actually a little hard to get back out of the hardy hole, that's certainly better and makes the tools more efficient in the long run. And I'll give it just a quick clean up on a 220 grip belt. Not completely necessary, but the smoother finish will help prevent corrosion. This is really all just a matter of trial and error and kind of going slow so you don't take too much material off. Fits good that way. Fits good that way. And it even fits all but one direction there. And I don't think I'm going to worry about that because like I say, I use it this way for doing socket chisels, and those are just two different size chisel sockets, and that's going to work just fine. This U-shaped hardy shank that used to take a wedge is way too short for use in this anvil, and that extra mass under the hardy hole and under the pritchel hole is part of what makes this anvil so much better. Things aren't so bouncy. Even that 300-pound anvil, when you get way out at the tail where the hardy hole was, it had just enough bounce and vibration that it was robbing you of energy while you were forging. So this is better, but if I want to use that wedge, I'd have to replace these with much longer shanks that need the wedge. Hopefully I don't need to do that. That also makes them a little harder to store when you suddenly have this much hardy shank on there. So I'd rather keep them at this length if I can. Now I did mention tools that are too small. You can use an adapter like this for. The adapter, of course, doesn't fit. And these tools just fit in the adapter if they're all the same size. I have such an oddball collection of tools from various sources that that doesn't always work. And I think for most of these, I'm gonna upsize them a little bit. But you can't use a grinder for that. So having an arc welder or a MIG welder, something like that in the shop can give you a few options. This adapter may still be useful in some cases. So at some point I'll grind it down just like I did that and hope this tubing doesn't get so thin that it doesn't work anymore. Now, if you have particularly valuable antiques, you may not want to do this. You might want to just go with the adapters so you don't have to alter the tools. Most of mine, while they're old, they aren't that old and they aren't particularly collectible. They are way more useful to me as a working tool. So I'm going to allow myself to do a little grinding and a little welding and things like that to adapt these tools to fit this anvil. But that's just a decision you have to make on your own. First thing I'm going to do is take a little piece of inch and a quarter square tubing and I'm going to make this fuller fit that. That's a little bit tight for this. I might be able to just drive it in there, although I'm not sure and I hate to get it stuck. So I'm going to do a little grinding on this, get that to fit in there, and then we'll just put a little bit of a weld on there to hold this. Then that will have to be ground to fit, although boy, it's awfully close. It doesn't need much. So this piece of inch and a quarter tubing now slides over here, not quite all the way to the top, and give it a little tap, but I don't want it to sit tight. That gives me a perfect place for a weld bead that won't need so much grinding to get it out of my way, because when you weld around here, the weld bead is then often in the way of fitting tight down to the anvil, so it frequently needs to be ground clean and flush. So I'm going to go put a quick weld in there. It doesn't need to be anything high strength. All you're doing is holding a spacer onto this. Matter of fact, it would probably stay just driven in here, but I'd rather be sure that the thing doesn't fall off at some point and get separated. And now we're right back to where we were with a slightly oversized hardy shank because the tubing is a little bit big but not by much. Let's see if we can do this without any die cam on there. 
And you can see scratches down here. The top looks pretty good, so it's just that lower part of the hardy hole that tends to be the hang up. Oh, by the way, on tools that are oversized and need to be reduced, an alternative to grinding is forging the shank down. And if it's a tool that you made, you know what the steel is, you know the heat treat properties, you can go ahead and get it hot, reforge it, then normalize, harden, temper, and put the tool back in service. Might still be faster to grind it, just depends on what you feel like doing. On some of the fabricated tools that have welded on hardy shanks, reforging that often stresses the electric weld and causes a fracture. So in those, I'd rather just grind them. Now that fuller fits pretty good. There might be just a little bit of adjustment. What happens if you overgrind, or if you have a tool that is just a hair too small, but is a little bit more wiggly than you want it to be? This isn't too bad here. And I don't really have any that fit that category. In the old anvil, I had quite a few that were just a, a hair undersized because that hardy hole was kind of oversized. It's really easy to just run a bead down the hardy shank with your welder and then grind that till it fits. And it just provides just enough extra material. I kind of show you what I'm talking about, but I don't actually have any tools that fit that category. And these tools that are way too small, you can just use heavier wall tubing or you could weld flat bar on the sides of it or a piece of angle iron. And of course, you can go back to making adapters for the anvil. So I got a lot of these things to do. All of these tools are gonna to need some little tweak or adjustment one way or the other. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what I was doing and give you some thoughts on how you can correct these if you have the same issue in your shop. Some of these old tools are just too valuable. You're not gonna to wanna to weld it up to make a fatter shank on it. You just have to figure out what you're going to do, whether that's some sort of an adapter or whether that's just a tool that you hang on the wall because you don't want to grind it down or forge it down to make it fit your hardy hole. In my case, that's this old stake. It's definitely too small for this. It doesn't quite fit this adapter, although it's pretty close. So I think I'm going to try and make another adapter that just fits this that will slip over here and maybe put a set screw in it so it lives with this, but I'm not gonna do any welding to this, I'm not gonna do any grinding to this. I'm gonna leave this in as much original condition as I can, and I really don't use it too much because I don't wanna abuse this cool old steak. That's really all I have today. Remember, if you need abrasives, check out Combat Abrasives. If you use the link and the coupon code in the video description, you can get a discount on your next order. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.